والله يدعو إلى دار السلام ويهدي من يشاء إلى صراط مستقيم Islam is for every race. Welcome to this week's edition of the Beauties of Islam. I'm your host, Yusuf Estes, and for the next few minutes we're going to be talking about one of the many beauties of Islam. And you can visit our website on the internet at www.beautiesofislam.com to watch programs like this and learn more about these beauties of Islam. Today I'd like to continue talking about our relationship, our relationship with our Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessings be upon him. In previous episodes, we've talked already about the other prophets such as Noah and David and Suleiman, Abram and Moses and also Jesus Christ, peace be upon them. We discovered that, in fact, the people who followed them at their time were the true believers and all people who were entitled to go to paradise. Likewise, Islam is teaching us that today those who know and understand the message that came with Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and follow him will also receive the same salvation, the salvation of going to paradise. Along the way, what we discovered was that there are even details of our lives that are found in the Sunnah. Sunnah means the way, the way of Prophet Muhammad that are beneficial to us in this life and certainly in the next life. We found that in the Qur'an the teaching is to obey Allah and obey his prophet, that he is the example for all of us. He's the mercy to all of the worlds and also he's the example to mankind to know how to live, how to act, even how to die. And that's what I wanted to speak about today is this concept of knowing how to live and die. Allah tells us in the Qur'an that we were created in the very beginning inside of our mothers from something called an Allah. And these were the first verses, the first words actually, that came of the revelation. The Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him, was about 40 years old at the time and he was in a cave meditating near Mecca in a place called Jabal Nur or the Mountain of Light. And then the angel came to him, the angel Jibril came to him This is Gabriel in the English language. And when he came to him, he commanded him in the Arabic language, Iqra! Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, just like, what? What do you want me to do? He said to him again, Iqra! Prophet Muhammad said, La ana biqari. He said, Iqra! Now, what is the Iqra? What does that mean? Now, a lot of people translate that to be the word read. Read. But is it really the word read? Actually, no, it's not. It means something bigger than that. It means to recite, as in reciting from memory. To recite. And what shall I recite? Iqra bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq. Khalaq al-insana min alaqa. Iqra wa rabbuk al-akram. Alladhi alamu bil kalam. Alamu al-insana ma'alam yalam. And the meaning more or less to the English language is saying that recite in the name of your Lord who created created the human being from a leech-like clot of blood. And that's exactly what we find today is the beginning of a human being. He starts out like this little teeny clot, a clot of blood shaped like a leech inside of his mother, inside the raham of his mother, the place of mercy. Recite in your Lord is so generous, who taught man how to use the pen, taught the human beings what they didn't know. And who is this? This is the Lord of the worlds who is speaking to us via this conductor, which happens to be the angel Gabriel, Jibril. Now, when Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, comes, he has the revelation and the people are listening to what he's saying. But at the same time, his life itself is an example for us. Consider this. Here are some of the things that he lived. He could preach if he wanted to, but how about live it? So many times we hear people talk the talk, but we don't get to see them actually walk the walk. We hear preachers, for instance, today telling us about not having sex until marriage, and then we find out some of these preachers themselves are doing these things. Now, what kind of an example does that set for our youth? Certainly not anything I'm impressed with. You either. We hear people speaking about a lot of things, but they don't live up to it. The Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, on the other hand, I want you to listen to this. 
He never ever even had a date with a girl, much less even kiss any girl, until he got married at the age of 25 years old. He himself was a virgin, and he married a lady who had been a widow. Her name was Khadija, radiallahu anha. That means, may Allah accept from her. She was the first to believe in him as a prophet, and she was the first to support him in his efforts as a prophet. And do you know he was married to her for all those years until she passed away and he never even looked at another woman so much so that this is one of the parts it's a good example for us as men Muslim men today that we don't consider anything other than marriage to a woman and when we're married to her we don't consider anything else with any other woman and that's the teaching of Islam but he lived the example to show it to us People often want to criticize our Prophet Muhammad and talk about, well, he had so many marriages. But in reality, I'm going to tell you something. It's not like marriages that people think about today. Today, marriages are a matter of convenience to people to get what they want for themselves, their own gratification. It's true. And a lot of people don't even bother to get married to get their gratification. And you know what I'm talking about there. But in Islam, it was always forbidden and still forbidden today for a man or a woman ever to have a relationship outside of marriage. If a man is married, he can have all the relationship he wants with his wife and she with her husband as much as they like within certain limitations. How beautiful that relationship is. But never, even as a joke, should Muslims even consider something about doing anything outside of marriage. And Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, was the best example. Now let's talk about his marriages. He only had one wife until she passed away. And then he took a wife who was an older woman that other people maybe didn't want to marry her. She was a very big lady, but he married her. He married a woman who was very old, beyond the age of even having a desire for men, but she needed somebody to care for her, to take care of her, be responsible for her. And he accepted that responsibility. He was offered the marriage of his best friend. His best friend was offering him marriage to his daughter when she was very young. And when we come back from the break, I want to talk about the marriage of Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, to his wife, Aisha. Stay right there. I know you're going to want to hear this. When we come back with more about the beauties of Islam. Islam is keeping up the pace. Islam is for every race. back and you're watching the beauties of Islam, we've been talking about the relationship that we as Muslims have with the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. We've discussed how he's the example for us and we particularly talked about sex life and we were saying that the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, had never ever engaged in anything like this except in legal marriage to his wife. We left off in the last part of this episode talking about his marriage to Aisha. I'm sure many of you want to know about this. This is the famous story that many people have twisted way out of shape and certainly something for us to delve into. And I want to at least briefly touch on this subject. People have accused the Prophet Muhammad, salam, peace be upon him, of some very illicit actions, especially with re regard to this topic. So let us examine exactly what it's really about.
First of all, the teaching that we have comes from Aisha herself. Now, all we know about her age is what she said herself. So the first thing we would ask you is, do you believe her? And if you said yes, do you believe her in everything she says or just some things? If she was going to testify in a court of law, would you accept everything she said? Because we would. We'll be the first to accept what she said. But do you know what it was she said? Actually, here's how she presented it. She said she was outside playing in the dirt with her toys, with her friends, whatever. Her mother comes to her. Now, listen carefully. Her mother comes to her and tells her, let's go inside the house. So they go inside. Now, when she gets inside, she finds her father is there. Now, so far, mother and father. I got it? And her father is offering her in marriage to Prophet Muhammad, peace and blessing be upon him. Understand clearly, it was not the Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that came to them saying, hey, I need a wife. It was the other way around. They were coming to him and saying, look, we would like it very much if you'd consider marriage to our daughter. Because this was known to be a custom of the tribes at that time to offer their young daughters, even when they were first born, to offer them in marriage. That when the child is old enough, take the child and that's your wife. But what we found in Islam is something amazing. In chapter 4, verse 19 of the Quran, Allah clearly says, O you who believe, you do not inherit women against their will. So women could no longer be married off without their own consent. And it's not considered that a young girl, 6, 7, 8, 10 years old, is old enough to make such a choice. Not until she reaches the age of puberty and she has the full mental capacity and maturity to make that decision. That's what we learned from this example. Because guess what? In the rest of the story, she said she went back outside to play. Now, how could anybody get anything out of that except the clear message that they didn't get married at that time? Because she did go back out to play. Now, there's another hadith or story that comes. Then she again tells us she, she was older. This is another example of not understanding correctly. And many people don't. Even maybe some Muslims don't either. But it's clear this was another occasion because she's older now. And now her mother again comes to her, takes her inside. And her father is again offering her in marriage to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. And guess what? At this time, she was old enough, mature enough, and old enough to have children. And she made the decision herself to accept that her father was offering her in marriage. And she said, yes, she would like to be married to Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him. If I stop there, that's sufficient for you and I to realize that this is not a story of something bad. It's a story of something good. Because look at this. She then continues. And I'm going to ask you, if you accept one thing she says, do you accept it all? Because she continues. And she says that it was the best of relationships they used to run and play together. She said, I used to race with him. And I used to beat him in the races. But then when I got old and fat, <laughs> she said, got fatter, you know, that he could beat her in the races. And that they used to play and they had a lot of things they did together. She used to tease him. She used to play games against him. And one time she even did something that's mentioned in Quran about telling him honey smelled bad on his breath and that was out of jealousy these are many stories we can talk about but the main thing is to know what was the relationship between her and her husband and it was such that even after he died that she continued to be so faithful to him she never considered ever marrying another man even though she was a young lady maybe in her early 20s she never considered to get married to any other man all of her life, she continued to say only the very best about her husband. In her whole entire life, she never said any disparaging word against her husband. In fact, I like for you to think of this. Instead of Shakespeare's Romeo and Juliet, where two young kids go against their parents and they commit suicide, here we have the story of Muhammad and Aisha who are in love so much that even death didn't separate them and they had the highest hope for a life together in the paradise. You choose which of the teachings sounds the best to you. For me, it's one of the beauties of Islam. Until next time, peace. Salam. Islam is peace. Islam is ease. Islam is not danger or disease.